Joaquin Phoenix is one of Hollywood's more unusual stars. On screen, he is widely recognised and respected as a talented actor. Yet off screen, his odd behaviour in recent times has raised a few eyebrows. Joaquin's upbringing was definitely unconventional. His parents were missionaries with the religious cult Children of God, and he grew up moving around Central and South America. The family moved to LA after leaving the cult, where Joaquin and his siblings were all encouraged to explore their creative side. Originally going by the name Leaf, we first saw him on the big screen in Space Camp, then Ruskies and Parenthood. Wanting to explore the world, he took a break from film to travel through Latin America, while his brother River went on to become a well-known and respected star. River's tragic death in 1993 thrust Joaquin back into the spotlight, with his 911 call being repeatedly broadcast following the incident. Joaquin once again retreated from the spotlight for a number of years. He made his comeback as Nicole Kidman's creepy toy boy in To Die For. His career continued to gain momentum with strong performances in Inventing the Abbots, U-Turn, Clay Pigeons and The Yards. He earned his first Oscar nomination for his mesmerising portrayal of the jealous emperor in Gladiator. One of the keys to his success was Joaquin's ability to embody the characters he portrayed. I think a lot of actors try to act like what they think they should act like. Um, instead of being, if you are emperor, you don't have to act like the emperor because you are the emperor. And that's it. And I, I thought that it'd be really interesting to see um, an insecure person um, with, with so much power, but you see him biting his nails or you see him lying, lying about or messing his hair, whatever, as I think he would do. Joaquin continued to take roles that challenged him and showed the range of his acting abilities in Quills, Signs and Buffalo Soldiers. You know, for me always, you, you go through a screenplay and you, and you get to one scene and you, and you go, ah, that, that sheds so much light on a certain part of his personality. Now I understand another piece of him. Yeah. It's kind of like putting a puzzle together um, and all the kind of different pieces to form that full character. Um, and it's, but what's been interesting about Elwood is that I don't think you can really say there's kind of one Elwood. He seems to, what was always interesting for me is, is trying to find how he interacts differently with each person. You know, the script is, was just, just fascinating because I've never really seen a world like this. I mean, generally speaking, um, you, you think you know, you're getting a, a script about the military. Uh, generally, it's either kind of boot camp or it's it's war you know either mm -hmm. it's it's set in a, an actual battle or or it's kind of um, leading up to that where this is kind of this odd interim in between um and it, it was so unique i just had never seen anything quite quite like it and i managed to to capture this this irony after working together in the thriller signs director m night Shyamalan wrote the role of lucius hunt in the village especially for phoenix it's really enjoyable reading one of Knight's scripts, um, and it's and um, it's an experience that you want to have. At least I do, um, totally pure, without anyone else's kind of input. Um, and so to to just uh, just read the scripts is a, it's a great experience. Before filming, Joaquin and the rest of the village cast spent three weeks in a 19th century boot camp, immersing themselves in the way of life of that time. It was really ideal, the rehearsal process, because it allowed us as actors to leave our lives behind, to leave behind um, any of our creature comforts, um, and to go into the woods and be together. Um, and I think through that process, we were able to, to bond, in, uh, you know, in a sense. Um, you know, obviously, during that period, um, community, you know, Community was survival. Um, everybody doing their part um, is, is, is really the difference between life and death um, during that period. So I think it was important to kind of create that sense of unity. On the set, Joaquin's dedication and skills impressed co-star Adrian Brody. Joaquin is also a, a very unique young man. Um, it's rare that I meet guy around my age who I feel is possesses a sensitivity uh, and a coolness that I identify with because I, 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 I it's really rare. Keen to prove he could also do action, Joaquin starred as a firefighter in Ladder 49, 
throwing himself into the role, he spent a month training to become a firefighter and then spent another month working in a fire station. Phoenix took advantage of the opportunity to conquer his fear of heights. Before filming began, he couldn't even slide down a fire pole. But by the end, he'd overcome this, hanging off the side of a 20-storey building on a single repelling rope. There is no more Joaquin uh, when he's doing a part. The, the guy commits like no one I've ever met. Uh, he spent uh, two months training for this movie, not so that he could look like he was a firefighter. He wanted to become a firefighter, and he did. I mean, again, if you when you watch the film, you'll see that that's Joaquin's face in every single fire sequence. He did it all. Joaquin is is a very unique and different actor, and I love how original he is. You know, you don't see that very often anymore, originality on screen. And Joaquin has a sense of strength and power and vulnerability all at once. And that is such a rare combination. And it's really fun to watch because he melts your heart in one moment, and then he, you admire him for being so, so tough in, in another moment, you know. So to have this combination is a very interesting, almost Eastern yin yang kind of thing, you know. It's nice, it's very nice. Having proven himself as an incredibly versatile actor, Joaquin once again impressed audiences as the legendary Johnny Cash in Walk the Line. Joaquin not only did all his own singing in the film, he also spent six months learning to play guitar convincingly like Cash. Life imitated art when filming was finished. Phoenix checked himself into rehab for alcohol-related issues. Kind of adds another layer to the realism of this performance, doesn't it? In 2009, Phoenix was again making headlines for his erratic behaviour on David Letterman's Late Show to promote his latest film, Two Lovers. The awkward interview was confusing, and among other things, Joaquin forgot Gwyneth Paltrow's name, stuck gum under Letterman's desk, and mumbled incoherently. Not long after, Phoenix announced his retirement from acting and his desire to pursue a rap career. Friend Casey Affleck documented this phase of his life in I'm Still Here, The Lost Year of Joaquin Phoenix. It's known in theatrical circles that the film is a farce and is in fact a piece of public performance art. Very cheeky. I think that Joaquin um, and I were on the same page, sort of creatively, both looking for something very new and different at the beginning of this project. Joaquin Phoenix is one intense guy, isn't he? Known for going so deeply into his characters that they take over his life, he consistently delivers memorable performances. Let's just hope he returns to the big screen soon to bring us more of those intense characters that we love him for. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.